have our medium sized heart model. Here we have a protective covering that lies over the area of the right atrium and this is the right auricle, the right auricle. Underneath here we have the right atrium and the right atrium is going to receive deoxygenated blood from the superior and inferior vena cava. So deoxygenated blood coming from the uh, upper portions of the body are going to travel through the right and left brachiocephalic veins. The right and left brachiocephalic veins are going to merge together to form the superior vena cava. And the superior vena cava is going to drain into the right atrium. The deoxygenated blood from the lower portions of the body are going to enter through the inferior vena cava. So both the superior and inferior vena cava are going to drain into the right atrium. So this is the right atrium. So deoxygenated blood from the upper and lower portions of the body enter the heart through the right atrium. Then they will travel through the tricuspid valve. The tricuspid valve you'll see here has the chordae tendini, which are these white string-like things. And the chordae tendini are connected to these papillary muscles shown here in brown. The chordae tendini along with the papillary muscles are going to function to put tension on the valves of the heart. The valves of the heart function to make sure that the blood flows in only one direction and it prevents the backflow of blood through the heart. The chordae tendini along with the papillary muscles are going to prevent eversion or prolapse of the valve. In other words, it's going to prevent the valves from opening in the reverse direction. Um, and that is going to ensure that this valve stays closed when it's supposed to stay closed. So once the deoxygenated blood ends up here at the right uh, ventricle, the right ventricle will contract and that will push the blood up through the pulmonary semilunar valve. Next, the blood will go to the pulmonary trunk, shown here. And remember, this is an artery. Okay, so the pulmonary trunk is an artery. The pulmonary trunk will bifurcate into the right pulmonary arteries and the left pulmonary arteries. At this point, that deoxygenated blood will then travel to the lungs. It will release carbon dioxide and pick up oxygen, becoming oxygenated. Then it will return back to the heart. It's going to travel back to the heart through the right and left pulmonary veins. So these are pulmonary veins. By definition, they're headed toward the heart, so they are veins but they are colored red because they carry oxygenated blood. The right and left pulmonary veins are going to drain into the left atrium. From the left atrium, blood is then going to travel through the bicuspid valve, also called the mitral valve, um, and then enter the left ventricle. The left ventricle is the largest chamber of the heart which makes sense because um, this blood has to get a rather large push in order to make its trek around the body in the systemic circuit, which is where it is headed to. And of course here I have the chordae tendini again and the papillary muscles. So once the blood is here in the left ventricle, the heart is going to contract, which is going to push the blood up through the aortic semilunar valve. Uh, once it travels through the aortic semilunar valve, it will enter into the aorta. Now the aorta has uh, different regions. This first portion is the ascending aorta the ascending aorta. And then here we have the aortic arch. So where we have these three superior branches, this portion is the aortic arch. 
after the aortic arch, this is going to continue to go down as the descending aorta. Now the descending aorta is separated into two regions. The portion of the descending aorta that goes through the thoracic cavity is the thoracic aorta. The thoracic aorta is going to continue to descend. It will leave the thoracic cavity by going through the diaphragm. When it goes through the diaphragm, it will then be in the abdominopelvic cavity. At that point, once it has traveled through the diaphragm, that portion of the descending aorta is the abdominal aorta. So the descending aorta is going to send oxygenated blood from the heart to the lower portions of the body, including portions of the torso. And the superior branches that are coming off of, coming off of the aortic arch are going to bring blood to the upper portions of the body. The first branch coming off of the aortic arch is the brachiocephalic trunk. The brachiocephalic trunk bifurcates to create the right common carotid artery and the right subclavian artery. The second branch coming off of the aortic arch is the left common carotid artery. And the third and final branch coming off of the aortic arch is going to be the left subclavian artery. So we have this separation here. This is the interventricular septum, okay? Just like we have a septum in our nose, it's our separation. And uh, this one doesn't show it very well, but just know that the wall that separates the atria from one another is the uh, interatrial septum the interatrial septum. We also have muscular layers. The muscular walls of the heart contain three layers. The innermost layer is the endocardium. The middle layer is the myocardium. And the outermost layer is the epicardium. So now the vasculature of the heart here that we see on the outside, um, so this is the right auricle, the right auricle, and we have the right coronary artery, which is going to kind of circle around this right auricle. Our left coronary artery um, is just this small little portion right here, and the left coronary artery is going to branch off to form uh, two other arteries. <clears throat> so one of these arteries is going to follow this left auricle around and kind of wrap around to the back and just think of it circling around the left auricle so that you can remember that this is called the circumflex artery. So we can call it the circumflex artery or the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery. Now we have another branch coming off of the left coronary artery which is going to follow, um, follow this uh, septum that we have here um, anteriorly. And this is, this is the anterior view of this interventricular septum. So we call this branch of the left common carotid artery the anterior interventricular artery. So the anterior interventricular artery. So here we have the great cardiac vein, the great cardiac vein, and the great cardiac vein is going to circle around this left auricle, and as it comes around and wraps around towards the posterior end of the heart, it is going to converge with other veins and become the cardiac sinus, the cardiac sinus. Now we have a small little structure here um, which is the uh, ligamentum arteriosum. And the ligamentum arteriosum is a remnant of the fetal heart. So in the fetal heart, we actually have a connection between this pulmonary trunk and the aorta. In this way, the blood of the fetus is able to bypass the pulmonary circuit. 